aviation industry has always tried to take benefits from technological advance in different areas. In e-pilots, we are taking a step forward in this area, which is a natural change, but it requires drastic new methodologies. One of the main targets and justification of e-pilots is that airlines and manufacturers are pushing for the concept of single pilot operation. If we remove from the cabin the pilot monitoring, uh, we need to design the digital assistant providing the support. This is not an easy task because that generates several new problems. In e-pilots, we try to understand the mechanisms that affect the performance of the pilot and we try to provide the assessment when the pilot is overloaded with several interruptions. The origin of this project is an open call from Clean Sky in which manufacturers are interested to introduce the cognitive computing tools in the flight deck to support the pilot in a single pilot operation. We had several past experience and expertise in human behavioral models and also in simulation. We decided to apply with our knowledge and, and also our tools, try to analyze how cognitive computing can provide benefits when supporting tools are deployed in the flight deck. The main challenges, at least from the point of view of artificial intelligence, was to find good annotated data. If you want to train a model either to predict a risky situation in the cockpit, like a hard landing, or to know if the pilot if is paying attention or has a high peak of workload, you need to record data that correlate to whatever you want to predict, but also you need this data to know in advance if this data comes from a risky situation or not. And this is very difficult because, of course, when an aircraft has crashed, you don't have any information anymore. So we had to train models with information gathered offline. This was also defined by UAB. And so because we know that there is a high difficulty playing this game, we make sure that the data record corresponds to a bad situation for them. So that was the, the main problematic in this project, but it's also a main problem in all uh, machine learning applications. If you don't have good data, then your model will be biased towards the annotations you have, and this is the main risk. We pilots are used to work with stress. That's demonstrated that during the phases of departure, and especially during the approach, is when stress levels are higher. If during an approach we have an abnormal situation, then stress reaches its highest level. The e-pilot tool helps the pilot in order the tool is constantly monitoring the cognitive parameters of the pilot and is capable to inform not only the pilot but the rest of the partners about a an stressed situation. To put an example, an air traffic controller officer that knows that a pilot is stressed could delay the non-critical authorizations so the pilot has more time uh, to solve the situation. In our case, our helmet has 14 sensors that collect data for different neural activities. You can capture different signals that refer to different tasks that you are doing. Well, we can collect all that data and we can collect these different signals at different waves also. And then we can put all that signals in an intelligent system, that a machine learning system, that uh, with uh, deep learning techniques, we can classify the level of workload. And then our output is this person has a high workload or a low workload. Well, this is a, an open question. How we can predict the evolution of the workload of a pilot? That depends on several factors. It depends on fatigue, it depends on the expertise of the pilot, it depends on how many interruptions affected during the flight. 
Usually pilots are very well trained in procedural action, so they are very well trained to govern the, the aircraft and perform the different phases of flight. However, pilots are constantly interrupted, interrupted from their traffic controller. They receive interruption also from the aircraft, from the flight deck, and also they can receive interruption from the cabin crew. Despite the pilots has been trained very well in this area, how to perform a procedure, every time they receive an interruption, they need to postpone some tasks and start working with other tasks. In a pilot, we monitor the effects of these interruptions. What we find out is that uh, using uh, some biosensors like uh, ECG, electrocardiogram, and uh, electroencephalogram, especially an electroencephalogram, uh, the signals you collect are related to the amount of workload or the complexity of the task that someone is performing. So it is possible that training a system that analyzes the profile of these recorded signals, you can predict whether one person is doing a, a task with memory demand or an arithmetic task or is performing uh, simultaneous tasks that requires a mental effort. So you can use these signals that are measuring what's inside your brain. Taking an action with a pending memory item can affect with an increment of 40% performing the action with respect to a nominal case. Cognitive computing can solve or can improve the pilot performance by filtering which are the non-critical safety interruptions in such a way that the pilot can maintain his performance and the digital assistant can provide the right elaborated information about an interruption at the right time when the pilot can attend, avoiding the penalties of performing a remember-to-remember -remember action. The series game was specifically designed by Slogic in order to require the players to do several simultaneous tasks and from time to time introduce interruptions under the assumption that in the cockpit the pilot has to perform several tasks at the same time and when the ATC sends them a message they have to interrupt the things they are doing. The second series game tried to replicate this situation in a control environment and to see if the models train with the memory demanding NBAC test could predict if the player was doing one or two tasks at the same time. And that's where the serious games have a role in the project, to gather data in a control environment. And what we've seen is that it is possible to do this. And this is very important if you want to train more systems applied to other areas. Always, whenever you collect data, this data should be reliable. This is the most important part. We have to design all the ground truth because in a machine learning system you need to have this ground truth very well defined. So this is probably the most difficult part to design and to obtain this ground truth. One of the main benefits achieved in e-pilots is the implementation of a socio-technical simulator in which there is the coexistence of aircraft and cockpit mechanisms with the human behavior. The situational awareness of the pilots can be modeled by which are the perceptual variables which are the comprehension variables, and finally, we can, through this FRAM model, to project the evolution of the workload of the pilot in the cabin. However, we cannot predict the evolution. To predict the evolution, we should provide a description of which are the external events that could affect pilot. We have been able to introduce which is the human behavior in front of different kinds of interruptions. What happens, for example, if ECAM system uh, informs about a malfunction of the aircraft, like engine out? What happens in case pilot is performing an action and he receives a cabin crew interruption because a health issue, like, for example, 
a heart, a heart attack of a passenger. We can design mitigation mechanisms in such a way that some of these interruptions can be postponed by a cognitive computing supporting system, or a cognitive computing supporting system could assess or could implement some of these internal tasks. Meanwhile, the pilot is attending the interruption. This is an excellent tool in order to prepare future scenarios and to validate new cognitive computing supporting tools before its implementation in a real flight deck. We can evaluate if these supporting tools can reduce the amount of concurrent tasks and also can allow an easy flow of tasks between the human, the pilot, and the tasks that are absorbed by the machine. This project provided good outcomes and achievements at research level. We have been developing new machine learning algorithms, new sociotechnical simulations that were not in the market, and also integrated different data-driven models with knowledge-based models, which is also outperforming present scientific literature. Well, the results from the point of view of the data application is that uh, it is possible to deploy an artificial uh, intelligence system for supporting pilots in the cockpit and to help them to avoid risky situations. But for me, the most striking part, the one that I think could have the widest impact, is that we can predict the cognitive state of people by analyzing biosignals has an impact in other areas of application and also, of course, to help in other fields of automatic driving. So that's the most important part, the, the cognitive state assessment. The, in the future, you will hear more about this. We have obtained several results for detecting the workload of a pilot. We have seen the sensor net system is very important but we have found that electrocardiogram and electroencephalogram make a good team to detect that. The first main conclusions uh, obtained in this project is that we have nowadays the technological ability to monitor the pilot's performance and also its physiological signals, but we don't have now the technological availability to interact with this information and the pilot to bring them in the limits of its mental workload to be able to operate in a safety manner. To move these results to the market, we should understand also which are the barriers and which extra research will be needed in order to push the technology to the market acceptability. For this purpose, we are proud to say that our collaboration with line pilots, pilots from airlines, and also test pilots, allow us to understand which are the main barriers for a pilot to accept this digital assistant. One of the main outcomes of this project, besides the excellent results achieved, is the roadmap. I would like just to highlight, for example, two very important areas that we truly believe that the uh, research group will work on and will pave the way for the deployment of secure and safety single pilot operation framework. One of them is the concept of shared situational awareness, in which two different digital assistants, one in the ground and one in their side, could communicate to provide and to inform about which is the actual scenario in each one of the sites. To deep into the cognitive state assessment, to accelerate methods, and also to design a system that does not alter the usual protocol in the cockpit. And of course, find out what are the other risky situations that could be predicted from the aircraft aerodynamic variables. A second important outcome from this project is the integration of socio-technical simulations based on human behavior with data-driven models. There is very few literature at scientific level of how to integrate both of them, 
and the results achieved in this project are quite outperforming present supporting tools in order to take better decisions when both of them are integrated. This is very important in order to inform the digital assistant when the pilot could need some assistance. Constant interruption from the digital assistant providing assessment to the pilot is just an extra workload that overload the auditive channels of the pilot and also can overload the visual channels of the pilot. So real-time information from the electroencephalogram data processed by a machine learning is critical to be integrated with this socio-technical approach to understand when and how this elaborated information should be provided to the pilot. I think that the future of a pilot should focus on the mm, trustworthiness and explainability of that machine learning systems. Which is the best way to inform the pilot because the pilot could say, um, okay, I don't trust you. Before putting in the real cockpit, we should ensure that the embedded system is accepted by pilots.